Hi, my name is uh, Remkes de Vries, um, and I'm here today uh, talking about how Gutenberg will change the WordPress landscape. Um, just in case uh, you want to see a digitized version of me, that's, that's me. Um, I manage partnerships at Yoast. Um, and I'm co-founder of WordCamp Netherlands and WordCamp Europe. Um, the, um, the first thing I'd like to do is kind of get an idea of who I have in the room. Um, can I get a show of hands who mostly develops with WordPress? Who creates content? Okay, who builds themes? Okay. Oh, there's a few waving that they don't know they're building themes, or <laughs> are you still doubting, or? Yes, yeah, Okay, we'll, we'll talk afterwards. Um, who here has heard of Gutenberg? And I do not mean in like in the 1500s, but like. <laughs> so, nowadays Gutenberg, show of hands. Okay, cool. So. Um, what is Gutenberg? I'll, I'll do a very short description because most hands were being raised. Um, Gutenberg is the new way to create content within WordPress. At least that is the goal. Um, Gutenberg is a project and uh, it's a plugin, it's, it's, it's a product, pro project developed as a plugin with the goal to replace the current uh, editor. It's a little more than that because it's not just the editor, it's, it's taking over the entire admin screen when you create a new post. I will, I will show you later on what it actually looks like. Um, but imagine that whenever you create a new post or a custom post type or anything that resembles content, um, there will come a new experience. If you want to learn more about the project in its totality, um, you can find more at this uh, address wordpress.org slash Gutenberg um, and this is what I think is the most important thing about it. It is about new possibilities and um, if you think about the times that WordPress changed um, a lot, there's only been a few times um, I don't know, does anybody remember when the first version of WordPress came out that supported pages? Anybody have a clue who, when that was? 2005. End of 2005, early 2006. So that was a big change because uh, even though for years WordPress had the um, people thought that you know it's good for blogs and that's about it. Um, but actually since 2006 it's been uh, doing more than that with adding pages. You can call it a light CMS, uh, but at that time um, I was still building um, Mambo and Joomla websites for clients. Didn't like it very much, but it was the best thing I could use. Uh, until pages became a thing. I was like, hey, this is actually much better. And I switched all of my clients for free to WordPress from Mambo or Joomla, whatever, they, whatever version they were stuck on because that's what it was. Um, so that was a big shift, uh, but there was a small crowd, so didn't get a lot of notice. Um, the next big, big, big thing that I think that happened is WordPress 3.0, which was in 2010, and it introduced custom post types. It introduced custom taxonomies, it merged uh, WordPress MU into WordPress, so you could create uh, multi-site installations with the same installation as uh, a standalone version. That was a big change, and it brought a lot of possibilities. It brought a lot of options, because at that point on, you could start creating uh, more flexible types of content, basically. Um, it's also the beginning of the rise of um, solutions that allowed you to use custom fields. Um, I'm a big fan of CMB2, but 
I think a lot of people use ACF. Um, and this all started to change how people started using WordPress. A um, couple of years in, uh, people started calling it more and more working towards an app platform. Now, I don't necessarily agree with that nomenclature, but I do think that was a big change. Gutenberg, and there's been a few changes in WordPress that were also pretty big. REST API is a big one. Um, but that's a very under the hood type of thing, uh, not very visible unless you actually use it. Um, Gutenberg will be a change, I think it will be the first change that is very visible for everyone. And not just visible, it will change your default experience that you have with WordPress. So this is an example of what the Gutenberg editor looks like. Um, this is an example of how we at Yoast look at how we can integrate with it. Um, who here uses Yoast SEO, by the way? So for the record, that's everybody. <laughs> um, one of the things that, um, so our, our motto is SEO for everyone. And we do that by uh, analyzing your content to the best of our ability, because um, we're somewhat limited in what we can do. But here's the nice thing. When we saw Gutenberg being introduced as a project and then realizing that every single element of content, which, what is an element? Element is a heading, element is a paragraph, an image, a quote, a video, whatever you can think of that you want to put in there is an element, is called a block. And those blocks give us the opportunity to zoom in per block. So right now, if you're trying to optimize your content, you'll have an option to um, uh, rewrite in order to get everything green. Um, I know a lot of people just are desperate to get everything in the right color, so content is perfect. But we are still measuring the whole blob of content. There's no difference between the first paragraph or the third paragraph. We can kind of measure it, but not really. Now, Gutenberg, as an editor, uses a very different foundation. So I'll, I'll, I'll explain a little bit how it, it will work actually creating content. But one of the big opportunities that it will give us as Yoast, but uh, we're not the only ones that can see options here, um, is that we can actually look at a particular paragraph and be very specific what is good about that paragraph or what needs improvement. So here you see an example of where Lego bricks is, hey, there's a, we, you've created a post before about Lego. Why not link it? Why not connect it here? Because that's a great thing to do, right? Make sure that your content is just not standalone, but you link inwards to other uh, pieces of content as well. So this is another example of, uh, this is what it currently looks like. So as you can see, it's a very different experience. Um, there's not a lot that looks the same from your current editor other than there's a title and there's a piece of text. But the, the sidebar to the right is displaying different information. This particularly is the Yoast SEO uh, meta box. Um, but um, any and all meta boxes that you have will be on the right hand side um, instead of at the bottom. That doesn't mean that there won't be meta boxes at the bottom anymore, but the default location would be the right hand side. Um, so that, that's quite a big difference um, to your normal editing experience. Um, out of curiosity, how many people have actually activated and installed the Gutenberg plugin? And who has actually created pages with it? So for the record, that it was, there was a few hands the first question, there were a couple of hands the second. So Gutenberg as a plugin is still limited. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit. I'm not going to do an actual demo demo, but just kind of switch to the browser. In wonderful. So 
This is an example of what Gutenberg currently allows you to do. Um, when you activate the Gutenberg plugin, it will sort of take over your, um, uh, when you create posts, it will sort of take over the entire experience. And it will show you one demo, which is what we're looking at right now. So the demo, as you can see, um, I have a sidebar, which has two different tabs. So on block level, I can do certain things. And on document level, I can do certain things. And this, this will probably look the most familiar because that's it's just restyle what we currently have. Um, but the interesting becomes when you click on certain blocks. So it will now display what this is. So this is a cover image. And when you click on it, you will immediately see the options that you have. It will tell you. And um, you can even change. Like if I want to use a different image, I can. Um, without having to go through add media, click on it, edit it, then select it. So a lot has been done to make that whole experience that we have in creating content is, uh, it has been put into let's make this easier. So this is a block. And as you can see, this is just a paragraph. And this paragraph has options. You can see them right here on top when I click on it. These are your default editor things that you, I'm, I'm sure you've used them before, align left, center, bold, italics, and stuff like that. Um, but when I click here on the block, settings for this particular block. So it's a paragraph block. It'll tell you what it is. Um, if you want to change things, it's exactly that. You just click on it and it will adjust to what you have set. If you'd like to use a drop cap, you can. You want to change the background color, you can. And per theme, you can actually assign those type of colors, right? So when you have a theme that has a certain color um, variation settings added to it, like the branding colors, um, and you would create a site for your client and your client has specific type of colors, you add them into the theme and it, they become available for you, uh, for your client. So there's a whole bunch of things that you can do here. But what I find interesting is that there's also funny things like this. So with one click, I moved that paragraph that we were looking at, I've moved it down. Um, I can move it back up again, just as easy. Um, and here, for instance, this is a very simple uh, text block that is right aligned. Now, if I prefer that on the left, it's just simple as that. Um, but if, like, hey, wait, I kind of want it here. I want it centered. That's all you need to do. So, especially when you're looking at um, content that's a little longer than, let's say, um, two or three paragraphs, it becomes a lot easier to play around with it. I don't know how, for the, those of you creating content, um, I don't know how you guys work, but when I have an idea of a blog post in my head, I start ramming down every single word that I come, come up with and sort of sort it out later. Like, Maybe that sentence needs to go up there. Maybe that paragraph should reformat it to this. So moving around those types of content is going to be uh, a big change. Um, images. Now, images become, um, in my experience, a lot easier to integrate. So this is a very straightforward image that is set as a line center. It's full size, pretty straightforward. If we scroll down, here's another example. This is an image block. And I'm, I'm, from the moment you decide, wait, I, I'm kind of limiting myself here with just two Im one image. I want to add two more. Um, you can convert an image block to a gallery block. So that's one click. And then the next click is you adding those images that you want to have added. So the layout that you see is what Gutenberg does on its own. So you don't have to float left, 
float right. I advise you to not use floats at all anyway, but that's a different topic. Um, but imagine the ease this brings to clients that are not very savvy with having to do inline HTML just to make sure that two images align next to each other and one below that. So as you can imagine, um, this becomes a much more stable version of creating content. Um, media rich. So there's an interesting way, uh, and, and mind you, your theme needs to allow for this. So it's not just activating your theme, sorry, activating your plugin, and then your theme works perfectly. There's a little bit more to it. But the options that it, the Gutenberg plugin, allows for your theme is to create what we call uh, wide or full wide alignment alignments with gallery. So you can create what you see here, which is the image bleeding left and right outside of the content. Um, I'm sure if you've ever looked at a post that was on medium.com, you've seen something similar. Um, by just adding one CSS class, you change a default image into a much nicer way of integrating an image. Um, it gives you a lot more options. So this, for instance, is how a two-image gallery would look like. And as you can see, um, I cannot only select two images side by side, I can also say this gallery is going um, full width and therefore creating a, a nicer, a different type of layout of how I display two images next to each other. And mind you, everything that you see here is default Gutenberg, right? So any of those blocks that we currently have available inside the Gutenberg plugin, any of those blocks, you can copy and paste that into a new block, change what you would like to change in that block, and you will have custom blocks your own, on your own. You can be as creative as, as you can possibly be with that. If you say like, uh, let's just say for instance you have a client who has a team page and a bunch of team members on there. Now what is the most used solution for that? Create a custom post type, add some meta boxes, make sure that the client just fills in what he needs to fill in and you take care of everything on the CSS end so it looks good the way you intended it, right? We all know that solution. So with Gutenberg, we have a different option. We have an option where a team page, where not everybody necessarily has to have a single page, a, a, a URL that says slash teams uh, Remkes de Vries, for instance, you don't need that, then you have an option to do it different. You can change that by creating a uh, team member block. And in that block, you basically get whatever you see here when you go to uh, the advanced settings that you see on the right here. You can change, right? You can change whatever you'd like in that block to, oh, there's no more options in this one, but as you can see with a paragraph, you have a few other options. Now, all of these options you can create. So instead of just having an, an input field that adds a additional CSS class, you can make that input the name of the person or um, select the image or give him his uh, uh, Twitter ID or whatever you want to make of that. You can be as creative as you like. You don't necessarily need to do a custom post type anymore just because there's no better way of you know, um, housing that content. So all these options and possibilities um, make it a lot easier to create more interesting content. This is a very simple pull quote. A pull quote is nothing other than a quote nicer styled, maybe left aligned, breaking out of the content or having a nicer type of style. You can have more um, variations in uh, a, a thick line above, small line below, for instance. All of those things you could make as an option. So this is just the, uh, the short demo. Um, the only thing I, I'd like to show you as 
what happens if I want to create a block. So this is basically all your options that you have. So whatever you would like to add is available here. Now I know this one, for instance, a table, is one of those things that you prefer not to have your clients work with, right? Who, who here has had to fix table layouts before? See, way too many hands. So what if you have a block that just takes care of all of that? So all the client needs to do, or you, if you're the content creator for yourself, is put stuff in the fields. That's it. Save and be done. Um, code, if you want to add code, if you want to add custom HTML. Columns. More tag. And here's a funny thing. Widgets. So if you want to, you can actually integrate widgets. Now if you're accustomed to using a page builder, who here is using a page builder? Okay, there's a fair amount of hands. So a page builder kind of does this already. Um, and you'd be, you'd be right to say that Gutenberg kind of takes a little bit of the functionality that page builders offer and makes it WordPress native. Um, you'd also be right in to start wondering, is there a future for page builders? If this is the first iteration of what Gutenberg does, you know, uh, three, four versions down the line, uh, are we still going to need page builders? And I think we do. Um, for starters, um, Gutenberg in its current iteration only allows you to style your content. That's it. No header, no footer, no widget areas in your footer or sidebars and stuff like that. Um, no, no, no fancy, fancy stuff. But on the other hand, there's not a lot stopping you from integrating a Gutenberg um, solution inside the customizer combination and you kind of have your page builder already. So what this does allow is um, a lot of options, a lot of opportunities for those of you creating content because um, what we're getting here is competition. So there's a lot of page builders out there. Um, I'm not a fan of most but I, I do enjoy Beaver Builder or Elementor. Um, and for the main reason is that they try to solve their stuff as WordPressy as possible instead of reinventing everything. Um, with Gutenberg, we get competition. So that makes all of those three products better in due time. And that will allow you to um, reap the benefits basically. So there's embeds as well. Um, these are all available for you now, uh, if you're not aware, but you can paste any of those um, URLs of t uh, a tweet or an Instagram post or uh, a Spotify song. Um, you can use those um, right now, but Gutenberg makes it in a, in a, in a more shiny interface. Um, and I haven't added any shared blocks, but Let's just say you create a particular type of block in a particular post. And two weeks later you realize, hey, that was a good one I created, I kind of want to use it again. So you can take a configured block, you could turn it into a reusable block, which means you can use it in other pages and posts as well. And that gives a whole different dynamic to how you treat content. Because now, for instance, if you have products somewhere or services and you create a service block, which where you shortly describe what your service is and give a little bit of blurb, how easy would that be if you could use that blurb anywhere else on your entire site? So again, opportunities. So when you start fresh, this is it, um, nothing special here um, to do other than add the plus and start creating your content. So this is where Gutenberg is now and um, this is a small video 
where it interactively shows you what you can do with the block. This is a WooCommerce integration. Uh, and as you can see, you can just easily switch um, columns, how many products you want to see per row, uh, number of rows. So what this allows you to do is think outside the box because your box has been removed. The box that you're currently using is called the default editor, tiny MCE. It's being, well, not removed, removed yet, but definitely pushed back. Um, and um, when Gutenberg is uh, integrated into WordPress, um, you will see a lot of options coming out. There's, a, there's already quite a few plugins that are working on integrating um, for Gutenberg and um, it's only going to get better. So, you might wonder, wonderful idea this Gutenberg thing, um, but what might break? Because that looks like a completely different editor than I'm currently using, and you'd be right. There is a lot of stuff that can break, because there's a lot of points of integration we currently use um, when we're using the editor. If you use WooCommerce, if you use Gravity Forms, if you use um, Yoast SEO Local, for instance, you have those nice buttons on top of the editor that allow you to insert a form or a um, store location or a product, whatever you can think of. There's a ton of integrations out there already. So naturally, um, those working inside the WordPress ecosphere that are aware of what Gutenberg does are already working on how to integrate it. So um, ACF, for instance, is, uh, I believe in their latest version, have some sort of integration. Uh, and I say some sort of because uh, I think, to the best of my knowledge, it's currently kind of a wrapper around their current um, custom fields and making them available inside of Gutenberg, but they're not necessarily solving it the right way just yet. So there's a lot of uh, plugin and theme developers working on solutions that will bridge whatever they're building into Gutenberg. So what might break? Well, this is, for instance, something that um, you might see uh, when you open your editor. So anything at the top, so the media map address opening our store locator, for instance. Um, the advanced tiny MCE toolbar, anything. I don't know, not a lot of people use that one, but there's a few plugins that, that do this. Um, advanced tiny MCE, for instance. Um, any tools that are on the net. Um, simple things like enter a subtitle here. Those are integrations on a custom field type of level. Uh, usually, um, what you see on the right-hand side for our particular plugin, the Yoast SEO, um, everything changes. There's nothing that is going to work if we would switch tomorrow, right? We, you need to integrate your products into Gutenberg. There's no way around it. So that's what, when I said like uh, a big change that we had in WordPress was 3.0, um, it was mostly under the hood, right? Only developers started using the custom post types and the custom taxonomies. And once we did, once we activated it, clients just saw extra options, but basically they looked the same like they would create a page or a post. Nothing different there. This changes everything. So the main issues that we currently see as Gutenberg is slated to be merged into WordPress for version 5.0 in case you were wondering why we're still on the 4.9.x branch, this is why. 5.0, um, when will it be released? Um, your guess is as good as mine. There were rumors last year of April, May. Um, I don't think we're going to make that. Uh, I think there's still a lot of work that needs to be done, uh, particularly when you look at extensibility accessibility, usability, and backwards compatibility. That's a lot of illities. <laughs> and it shouldn't make you ill. But um, it definitely means that you have work to do if you are 
um, looking for how to integrate this the best way possible with your current setup, with your client setup. Now, for instance, if you have um, projects that you are you're managing them for your clients still, um, there will be work for you to do. There's no way around it. It might just be activate and update and make sure uh, you double check everything is working as intended still. Um, but it's possible that the plugging that you're using for, or that your client is using is just not up to date just yet. Hasn't actually given it thought on how to integrate inside of the Gutenberg editor. So now is the time to be starting to think about how do I solve this? What does it even do? What does it allow me to do? So because it's a, a plugin that is uh, very much in the works as um, we're trying to figure out when and where and what to integrate, there's a whole a lot of discussion on what Gutenberg should do out of the box, what it shouldn't do out of the box, um, how it should work, how to best approach building these blocks, all of that. Most of it is, is, is starting to solidify, but if you're looking at uh, uh, software uh, versions, we haven't entered a beta stage yet. So we're technically still in alpha. It's a relatively stable alpha, um, but 2.5 version uh, a week ago brought in some issues, which 2.6, which I think was released yesterday, the day before yesterday, uh, fixed. So there's, there's stuff that you can break. So my advice wouldn't necessarily to go and activate this on your live site and play with it, as in let's just see what happens. You know, if you're the adventurous type, go for it. <laughs> Personally, I play with it. But I play with it a lot because I want to understand the editor. It really, really works differently. So the blocks, you can ignore the whole idea. You don't have to understand that you're working with blocks. If, if you have a client that just likes to type or copy paste this stuff that he created in Word and then paste it in and be done with it, hit a few enters, add an image, and he can do that or she can do that. It's not about make it, a Gutenberg is not about making it more complex, but because there are way more options and possibilities once you start clicking around, you do have more options, right? So there's a lot of ways that you can provide an environment where somebody's possibly screwing it up a little bit. Now, ideally, you don't do that on a live site. Um, you could, but I wouldn't recommend to do it. So on the roadmap currently is uh, a commenting UI, meaning we could have comments per block as in feedback. Think about content editing teams, right? There's a beautiful article written about Gutenberg and there's a new version out that says 2.5 and right before it launches the, or, or the publish, press publish is, is almost, you know, somebody's hovering the button already, you have the ability to add a comment to that particular paragraph that says 2.5 and say, hey dude, did you see that 2.6 just released yesterday? might want to change that paragraph. So things like that become um, a nice option. Um, UX improvements, so that's, for those of you not know that UX is uh, user experience, so the, the entire user experience should be, the focus should be that it doesn't add another layer of complexity. The focus should be, this makes it more nice to play and work with. Now that's not an easy one to do when you're introducing an entire new interface. Um, and um, it's one that, that still needs a lot of work. Um, Plug-in APIs, so that's for instance uh, to make it possible to have a proper Metabox integration or the integrations that Yoast SEO needs for instance. Um, accessibility, so unfortunately the current state on accessibility means that Gutenberg, as it stands now, is a step backwards with regards to accessibility. Um, but on the other hand, it's very much on the radar of the developers and um, the people working in the accessibility field as well uh, are 
incredibly on top of this, and I, I have no doubt that everything will be fixed before um, it actually is integrated. But it's a, it's a big issue currently. Um, and there's, there's ideas for mitigating compatibility, as in uh, there's a general consensus of how to solve this, um, but um, it's not there yet. So this is a very, very legitimate question about, by uh, Riyadh. Um, what happens to my custom fields? So who here has used custom fields in their integrations? So that's a lot of hands. That's, I would say, 80%. So obviously, this is something that needs to be solved. Um, ACF is who uses that? Yeah, about the same percentage. So it's a very high percentage of people actually using ACF. So um, it's a good thing to know that um, Elliot is very much uh, aware, the developer for uh, ACF, uh, of what needs to happen. Um, but um, there's still a lot of work to be done. So. Um, it, it kind of boils down to this. Ask not what WordPress can do for you, but what you can do for WordPress. So that's a reference to um, Morten Rand Hendriksen's talk at WordCamp US. Uh, and he basically said, hey, if you want this, this editor thing that we are improving, which we are changing, if you want to have it work as you intend it to, then you need to start helping out in making it so. Um, so this is a time, if you haven't yet, to start looking at um, Gutenberg, activate it, and actually use it. Now a simple way would be to um, create a copy of your live site and activate it and convert every single page into a Gutenberg page and see what that does. Play with it. That's current content that you already have. You can fiddle around with it, doesn't, doesn't hurt if it breaks. Um, and then the next step could be that you do use it on your live site. And then you can choose per post that you create if that's easy to do in Gutenberg, yes or no. Because um, that's currently how the editor works. You can choose per post, per new post, whether you do use Gutenberg or not. So you're, you're not um, screwing up um, if you were to use it. Uh, and in other instances decide not to do it. So the, um, the way going forward is that all of you, to some level, should find a way how to help WordPress as a project. So what can you do? That's it. Test. Test, test, test. Um, and once you're done testing, test again. Because that really is the only thing that you can do. Now, if you're just testing your silo and you don't mention what you're actually testing and what you're breaking and what you're expecting to work and it doesn't work the way you expect it to do, then um, you do need to share your feedback, right? Um, not everybody here is a developer, nor do you need to be, but it's not about just the developers. This is a content creation thing, so that means basically everyone in this room is going to come across what the changes are in the new editor for you, for every single one of you. Which means that even though I'm, I'm the one standing between you and lunch, so um, I, I, I can see that you may be like, you know, just finish up so we can eat, but um, I do like to stress out that the very best thing that you can do is actually test and actually share your feedback. So where can you do that? So Gutenberg is developed as a plugin on GitHub. This is the address. And you will find, and this is an old screenshot on the right. There's way more issues now. Um, Open ones are closed ones. Sorry? Open ones are closed ones. All of them. <laughs> Uh, also a pull request, there are way more pull requests as well. Um, which means it's been getting traction. It's, get, it's been, been getting traction a lot more than uh, when uh, Matt Mullenweg introduced it. Um, and that's a good thing. And if all of you started testing and reporting uh, at the same time, 
uh, that might be even be a little bit too much as well. But I would like you to encourage you to, between now and WordCamp Europe, because you're all going to WordCamp Europe, right? Yeah, see, silence is golden, so. Um, you have done your fair share of testing. And anything that you come across that is like, wait, I expected it to do this, but that's not even close to what I'm seeing. Why is it not working? Um, maybe it's a feature, maybe it's a bug, I don't know. But you, you, you're gonna wanna confirm what is actually uh, the issue. So go to github.com. If you don't already have an account, it, create one, it's very simple, very straightforward. And with that, it gives you a voice. It gives you a voice to be heard. You are the one that is helping determine this future of not just Gutenberg, but WordPress as a project. Um, so there's more than testing that you can do. Um, when you go to meetups, WordPress meetups, when you uh, come across uh, people not here today, but working with WordPress, um, you need to spread the word. And I don't mean need to, as in if you don't, I'll, I'll come find you, but um, I do mean it in as you should have that concern for yourself, and by having that concern for yourself, you also have that concern for your neighbors. Um, spread the word. Start integrating. For those of you um, wanting to play with it in a live environment, you can. There's a few things, so if you go to wordpress.com, sorry, wordpress.org slash Gutenberg, I don't know where that happened, sorry. Um, the, um, that project page explains you how to best integrate. It links up the Wikipedia page on GitHub for Gutenberg, and it'll explain all the different options uh, that you currently have in how to integrate. So. The very straightforward things are that your CSS classes that you add for the cover images, for instance, and the full wide and, and that, those types of things, you need to physically add uh, CSS classes for that in your theme. So without those, your theme is going to break. Um, you can ask for help for whenever you come across something that is uh, confusing to you or you'd like to have more um, better explanation or you'd like to know the decision behind why is it working like this and why are we not doing that um, and I would I'll make this uh, presentation available uh, uh, later on but um, I'd like you to I'd, I'd like to invite you to actually use um, these resources even if you end up just using it for content creation it gives you an, a good idea of what the ideas are behind it and um, it's, it's, a, it, it's a good way to get a little more in-depth than me highlighting here. Um, these two videos are definitely well worth watching because uh, the first one, uh, Morten, he explains very, very beautifully how to best approach, like how do I make this WordPress thing better? Um, how do I prepare, what kind of mindset do I use, and the second video is Matt Mullenweg at the State of the Word in 2017, which was in, uh, in Nashville. Um, there's a very long demo by Matthias, uh, one of the lead developers of uh, the Gutenberg plugin, um, in which they explain in depth what type of uh, options there are. So you, you saw me show a little demo of the blocks that you have available, um, but he'll actually slow, show you, um, m m I think it's about 15 minutes, um, what the options are and how you can actually um, think about uh, using it. So that's it. That's all I have to say about Gutenberg. Um, test, integrate, and feedback. That's basically what it come down, comes down to. and and realize that this is not something you can escape. This is going to happen. So the classic editor, as you see it now, will be available even after WordPress 5.0 launches. Um, but you will have to turn it on, most likely. So there's, there's still debate about how that's going to work. Um, but 
know that um, you cannot escape this one. Thank you. We, we have time for questions if there are any, which I can't imagine, but yeah? Sorry, I didn't catch the first part of your question. Do you think Uber will replace advanced custom fields, or do you think there will still be a need for it? I think there will still be a need for it, but definitely less than currently is uh, available. Yeah. So, sorry, the question was: Do we? Do I think if? Uh, uh, custom fields options are still going to be uh, required or necessary once Gutenberg launches. Um, I think yes, uh, but not, definitely not the way we see it now. Yeah. Yep. Um, if I want to create a new block type, do, uh, can I click it together like it would in ACF or um, do I have to code it actually? Um, there are ways of doing it in a smarter way than coding everything from scratch, but there's no UI currently available to create a block like that. So um, there's a, um, he's on GitHub, I, I forgot his name, um, Ahmed Awais, I think, I, I, think, I think his name is. He has created a uh, command line tool that says um, create Guten block, and it'll pull in everything um, have your um, the, the file hierarchy and everything is, is in place and then you start building the, um, the Guten block itself. Um, I think I forgot to mention that um, Gutenberg as a plugin and as an editor solution is uh, almost entirely built inside of JavaScript, React to be specific. So we are making a big switch from uh, PHP to JavaScript once Gutenberg launches. So if you want to actually really integrate into uh, um, Gutenberg, you're going to have to learn JavaScript deeply. Yeah. Uh, I want to go one step further in that direction. I think the API is completely missing for, for handling blocks because there's nothing else for the data structure. And Like it's, it's encapsulating it, and, and from the outset, it's pretty hard to, to get to, to the options and to, to be, uh, do the same things that could be doesn't react in other frameworks. And it's, it's, it's like there's a lot of missing links currently to, to, to get to use the data data structure that is, of course, an awesome idea for the future, but it, it doesn't really be open now for the so I'm not going to repeat that entire question, <laughs> but I think the TLDR version is um, Gutenberg currently is lacking an API to integrate with easily uh, on a block level. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Or any API. Yeah, well, to, to use what, is, what it produces itself in the data structure. In right, to use what you create in Gutenberg as a data structure in other parts of where you may need it. Correct? Yeah. yeah. So there's a lot of debate about it, and there's a lot of ideas about it. Uh, it just hasn't finalized yet, but it's something that uh, the developers are aware of. And um, so uh, currently we have an API for the sidebar, which is a very beautiful solution for something very simple, but in my mind that should have been allowed to do way earlier. And I think you kind of have to look at it in that perspective. Um, it, it's still alpha. It's not beta. It's definitely not even a release candidate. So whatever we currently see is moving towards what it will end up being. But um, the developers are aware that there's a lot of stuff that needs to be added to make it a complete solution. Yeah. Yeah. When and how and which version, I have no idea. All the way in the back. Is it as soon as I'm using the Gutenberg, I cannot access the code view anymore? You, you cannot access what? The code view of the content text view? Yeah, you can. Uh, per block. Per block. 
Every single block has an option to the right, the three dots, and there's, a, there's an option to select the um, uh, advanced view or edit the HTML directly. Yeah. I saw another. Yeah. Uh, even when you set up the state of the plan, uh, do you think WordPress 5 will shift to zero? <laughs> so the question is. Um, I'm following the debate for a long time now. Yeah. And there's still so many other questions. And you say that the plan is more or less in alpha state. Yeah, so the question is, do I think um, WordPress 5.0 will actually launch this year? Um, that's, a, that's a wonderful question. Uh, and I'm not trying to be political correct here, because, um, but I, I have no idea. So the thing is, um, I don't think Gutenberg has hit critical mass yet in acceptance, in people actually looking at it. and start helping out with it. Uh, if that were to start, like with you guys, and then that spreads out, um, I think there's an opportunity that, that, we, that we can actually see 5.0 ship this year, uh, but it just needs a lot of work still. Um, APIs and stuff like that kind of needs to be in there in my opinion. Uh, I can see it sh being shipped without it, but you know, um, what I think it needs most now is the clear decision of what needs to be in the 5.0 version. And I don't think there's a, a clear vision just yet. There's ideas and there's, there's been a lot of uh, talk about it, but it's, it's still a, a big, bit of a guess from the outside looking in. Um, but it has the potential of being launched this year, yes. Um, don't ask me about the percentage. <laughs> All the way in the back. So it's the perspective for me that I have to rebuild all the templates that are made by hand for them. You build them by a so the, you're asking about custom fields? Yeah. And uh, whether you will have to rebuild all of your sites to integrate. Yeah, so um, custom fields are data points that are there still after Gutenberg will launch. Um, uh, on the 10 year old website, uh, which some custom fields which have, have been filled in there by the time, sometimes, by the time, uh, you can make updates and all stuff, it's very good. We'll be patient for it without doing anything, just about it, just about the custom fields. So if, if you're using uh, default solutions to create custom uh, meta boxes for custom fields and stuff like that, be that CMB2 or uh, ACF or any of the other solutions out there, or, sorry? So if you just use the WordPress default custom fields, um, that is all still considered being uh, backwards compatible. So that should just work. That is the goal. So it shouldn't be that just because WordPress updates, just because it at changes the diff to a different editor, that your site breaks. That is not the goal. That has never been the goal, and I don't see that changing. So. So I just was talking about template tag to, to uh, shouldn't change. Get both made up. Yeah, that doesn't change. Doesn't change. That's all backwards compatible. It maybe there comes a better solution, and you may need to. It becomes a deprecated function, and you need to upgrade at some point. But it's not going to break. No. Um, I don't think of any time anymore. Plus, uh, again, me, food, you. Uh, thank you all. And. Uh, <laughs>